Hi folks, I'm back with another video. This one is a follow-up in that playlist that I created for alternative social media sites. So I had already covered one or two others like MeWe Social, uh, Ether, and one or two others as well. So this is just a follow-up and what I want to explain today is just is what is Mastodon Social Network and how does it differ from Twitter? Many are going to say it's obviously a lot better than Twitter because it's got similar functionality but a lot more. So if you're familiar with something like TweetDeck, the type of interface you get is going to be very similar. And the fact that you're doing what Twitter would call tweets, you're doing toots on, on Mastodon. That's just the term they give it. But I'll get back into that more when we look at the interface itself. What I just want to show now is the... Fed, it's part of the Fediverse network, essentially. So these are all different social networks that you're seeing here. Uh, Mastodon is one type of social network. Uh, PeerTube is a video-related one. Uh, what else is there? Friendica, GNU Social. Uh, what else have we got? There should be Hubzilla as well. There we go, Hubzilla as well. And you'll see out of all the networks at the moment, Mastodon has got well over 2,700 to 2,800 uh, what they call instances. So remember, these are federated networks. There isn't a central server like you've got Twitter's got one site, Facebook's got one site. If that site's up or it's down, everything is up or it's down. Everything connects to one site. If that site is blocked, everything is blocked. With the Fediverse, it's a number of separate instances or servers. Uh, or domains, as in you could maybe think of it similarly to email domains. If you're at gmail.com and somebody else is at yahoo.com, you can each compose emails and send emails to each other, but obviously only when the other instance is up will the message get through. So I could, I could be Donnie at gmail, and you could be Barry at yahoo.com. If I want to send a message to you, I'm not going to send it just to Barry, uh, as you would do on Twitter. You just have a Twitter handle. With Mastodon and these networks, you'll give the domain name as well. So you'll be at Barry at Yahoo.com uh, or whatever the name of the Mastodon instance is. So there's quite a bit more flexibility. And the nice thing about that is not only are they separate instances themselves, they can also be run to separate rules. So you could have a very strict type of rule base on a particular instance and there's nothing stopping you hosting it yourself. So you could host one just for your family or just your friends, and you could decide how much or how little goes on that, on that instance. The other instance owners can then decide whether they want to connect to you or to block you from connecting to them. So there's, there's, there's a fair lot of flexibility and in rules and managing of the, of the different instances as well. So you might join a very friendly type instance. Uh, there might be another one where it's just a lot of scientists or a lot of technology guys involved. Doesn't mean you can't join it. All I'm saying is that's the local type of, of messaging and so on you're going to pick up there. The other interesting thing is you're not only limited to Mastodon. So if you've got an address, for example, it's somebody at, say, Barry's got a, a profile at Friendica. Friendica's also got multiple instances, 102, for example, in this case. But he could be Barry at, say, whatever the name of the instance is, friendica.social. Then you could also follow him, even though he's not using Mastodon. You can follow him from Mastodon. You can like, you can comment, and you can retweet or retweet uh, yourself on Mastodon, and vice versa. He or she can do the same thing from their side. So, again, Fediverse all works very nicely together. You're not limited to a particular instance. You can there's flexibility in rules as well. So. Uh, more information about this, uh, it's at fediverse.network. I'll put these addresses below the video as well. So the next challenge you're going to sit with really is, so, okay, I want to create on Mastodon. I want to be on Friendica or wherever else. I, I, I'm preferring to use Mastodon as my home instance. So which of the 2,864 do you choose? You can go to a site, something like this one, instances.social slash list, and this one is intended specifically for the Mastodon instances. So there is a wizard over here that you can click on. It'll, it'll ask you a couple of questions and run through certain of your preferences, and it'll give you a short list of places you can uh, register at. Remember also, you can also move your account from one Mastodon instance to another. So it's not a train smash. The only thing that is going to happen is your address will change. You won't be uh, Barry at 
mastodon.social, you're going to be at mastodon.technical or something else. But it's not impossible. It, it is fairly easy to do, and they do help automate that process for you. So if you go to this site, you could choose things like particular languages you want to see. Um, I mean, if, for example, if you were German, you were going to choose maybe German here or Spanish or whatever the case is, and, and it'll give you a preference of the home sites in that language. Remember still, you can interconnect to any other instance, so it doesn't really matter. Then you can also choose any particular filters here for, uh, well, allowed. If you want spam and advertising and various other things, you can choose that. Then you can also say what is prohibited, uh, whether you don't want to see any links to illegal content or spam or advertising. And you can even set maximum users. In some cases, people want to find a quieter instance. Other people want to be on a very, very busy big instance. So you, you've got all those options. And basically, if you click search, it's going to come up with this list. And all you have to now do is, this will be the short list at the moment. You can then also see on the right here how many users are using that instance at the moment and how many posts or statuses they've uh, posted. So it just gives you an idea of how busy the the actual instance is before you you get involved. It, there's quite a few that have got specialist interest groups. So I'm not going to go into one or two of these. I'm not too sure what some are. Uh, but here, for example, is a social one. And it's to do, for instances, for people who like to play video games socially. So if you clicked on that, it's going to give you a bit of information. And then you can say, go to the instance. And you would essentially go there and then sign up uh, with this instance and your address in this case if you chose Barry at you'd be Barry at vidya dot social that would be your address on master and, and you could give it out to anybody whether they're on Friendica or anywhere else and they'll be able to follow you so it, Fediverse is quite a big um, quite a big social network everything is interrelated and interconnected sort of the way social networks should be I mean you don't want to be on email and you can only send email to gmail users and it's going to be pretty boring so yeah I I do quite like the idea of the of the Fediverse. I have covered one or two peer-to-peer -peer networks as well in my social network playlist. So you can have a look. I will put a link at the end of my video to that playlist. So you can have a get a taste of what some of the other networks look like. But I think without further ado, let's jump into what you're going to see if you've logged into Mastodon. So this is actually what you're seeing. This is the screen, the desktop screen. And I'll give a brief glimpse at the end what the mobile app also looks like. So these are desk, uh, or browser based, sorry, browser based instances of Mastodon. And yeah, this is obviously where you're going to compose messages and so on. But here is your home feed. Essentially, the home feed is everybody that you're following. There's no algorithms here that are inserting advertising or other things that you not have not opted to follow. So just remember, you've got a lot of control over what you're seeing in this in this particular feed. Notifications is anybody that has uh, liked or retweeted or retweeted your your post or also anybody that's commented to you uh, or commented on your post. You can control that um, and there's also mentions where you've been mentioned possibly in a third party post but essentially this is where you're going to see anything notification wise. Then this column over here I've set it up for no, for basically filtering on anything where Hubzilla or Scuttlebutt is mentioned. Those are two things I'm keeping an eye on at the moment. So if I go down here, you'll certainly see hashtags in there that have got either Scuttlebutt or, or Hubzilla. It's a good way of just keeping an eye on certain things that you're interested in. And you, there's quite a lot of scope here to uh, expand this further. You'll see there's, you can you can also choose to exclude certain hashtags as well as include any or it must contain the following three or four or whatever the case is so yeah very very useful on the right hand side here this column will change depending on what you've clicked on but there is a getting started there is a local timeline so what happens with the local timeline is this is a a stream of posts from everybody that's on the instance that I'm on. So if I was on that, um, what is it, the video game playing instance, what I'd be seeing here primarily would be people posts from those people, maybe about video games. So, so give some thought to your home instance. That, that's the one, one thing you're going to see on the local timeline. Then the federated timeline is 
is everything. It's really all the Mastodon instances. So uh, this is not outside of Mastodon at this stage. Remember, I said if you're under your own feed, under home, you, you can opt to follow people under Friendica and other networks. Those you'll be seeing in here. These are, those are the people you're following. But the federated timeline is everything being posted literally live on, on Mastodon. So as you, as you refresh it every few seconds or whatever the case is, you're going to see um, lots and lots and lots of posts going past. You're going to see Japanese, German, Spanish, all the various languages as well. So it's quite interesting if you just want to keep an eye on the, on what do they call it, the, the hose feed or whatever it's called, where you sort of see everything. Those are posts that have just been posted now. Then you can also do direct messages. You can bookmark posts. You can have favorite posts. You can have lists. It gives you an idea down here of what's trending at the moment on Mastodon. Um, profile directory, I haven't used very much because I'm not finding the proper search functionality on it, on, on this type of browsing, really. So, But it is there. There is some information about the actual... Uh, instance itself. So this particular one is mastodon.social. You could call it the original instance. It was created and also the, it's, it has been established by the creator of Mastodon, uh, which is Eugene. Uh, his handle is at Gargron. So he's put there the code of, this is the code of conduct for this particular instance. So remember again, different instances, different rules, but these are the rules that, that he enforces. Um, there's staff contacts, block contact, imprinting, that sort of thing over there. So let me just go back. Um, I just want to see what else that I want to show here. Oh, yes, the other thing was, oh, so what I did talk about was, was also searching. So you, you can search for, and if somebody's giving you a, a particular Mastodon address or a Friendica address, you can go and have a look in here and you can search for either at which will be their username and their domain you can search by hashtag uh, or url or whatever so i can give an example here so if i've searched there for say at donny you're going to see all the at donnies that uh, are available and here you will see i had i had another inst i was i was a member of another instance so there for example is my old address i see and you can just unfollow or follow over there you also see something else here interesting at Dani at nextcloud.gadgeteer.co.it. So what also happens is Nextcloud itself has got its own little built-in social network and it in turn interacts with the Fediverse. So you don't even have to run Mastodon itself. You could be running, say, Nextcloud. You could be running within Nextcloud your own version of, of something like Mastodon. Um, there's one of my old accounts which I said I'd moved. And this, this is this account that I'm on at the moment. So that just gives you an idea of search. It's pretty easy to find people. Then um, the other thing I wanted to show you quickly was controlling of content so you don't want to see. Uh, and that's pretty important. So any post that you're seeing on your feed here, it's going to show you who the, pr who the person is, the profile. And you can like a post you can retweet it over here or you can reply to the person over there but here these little three dot menus if you click on those you can copy a link to your status you can embed this in something else you can bookmark it you can mention the person you can send a direct message to them but this is where you can control for example muting so muting is not going to block the person or notify them or do anything it's just going to basically mean you're not going to see them in your feed at the moment, even though you'll show up still as a follower. Blocking obviously is going to cut your connection altogether and reporting will go to the instance owner. So again, it depends on the instance owner, how they apply the rules. Uh, the other interesting thing is that if you are finding that a particular instance is spamming you with lots of information you don't want, you can also block, you can actually block the entire domain, which will mean everybody at that particular instance, you're not going to see their posts anymore. Um, so there's, there's a fair bit of control, I think, um, with this. I, I get very, very little that I'm, that I've have an issue or that I'm uh, particularly worried about. The other thing I can show as well is, uh, the profile. If I click on my name, for example, uh, there is my profile. It's got some authenticated identity. So I've used Keybase, for example. 
You've got a couple of others. These you can give them whatever name you want and whatever address you want over there. So I just changed this to Scuttlebutt yesterday, but it just gives you an idea of where else you can find the person. You can obviously change the background image and so on there. There's my Mastodon address. You can follow me, in other words, on this address. You can follow me from Mastodon, Friendica, Hubzilla, anywhere else on the Fediverse. Then there's a short little bio you can put in. It gives you an idea of how many followers you've got, how many people you are following, and I've done 3.9 thousand uh, toots already on this account. Uh, and by the way, I can just maybe mention between my Twitter account and my Mastodon account, I get noticeably more interaction and comments I get through Mastodon than I actually get on Twitter itself. So that's also quite interesting. And then below here, you, you can just see the last lot of your own um, toots that you've actually sent out. And it'll be the same if you go to somebody else's. I can show you, for example, if I take Jan's here, click on his. Likewise, you're going to see what he's got in his profile. I can follow, unfollow there. You can also mute, block, or report, or block his domain. You can see what his summary is, how many toots he's done, followers, and then you can see his last couple of uh, toots. It's just useful if you want to see, do or should I follow the person, or shouldn't I follow the person? Then you can get a good idea over there as well. Um, yeah, so the other thing I can show you quickly is also to do a post. You'll notice something else here. There's a big difference from Twitter as well. You've got up to 500 characters, so you can type a reasonably longish uh, message, which is quite nice. You can do attachments, and the attachments are basically going to be attached image, uh, little video clip, uh, or whatever you want to add. There is also a poll. You can put a poll in with a number of choices and decide how long the poll is going to run um, amongst all your followers. Then you've also got the visibility. Public, obviously, everybody's going to see it in every timeline if they're following you or if they look at the federated or the local uh, streams. You can unlist, so it'll be visible, but it won't appear in the actual timelines. Then followers only and then direct where you're just mentioning a person and it'll only go to that person. No one else is going to see the message. The other nice thing, of course, is content warnings. So you can type the warning in here to say, okay, this is going to be politics maybe. Oops, well, there's typically you know, politics. And then you can put your normal post in here. What's going to happen is the person is going to see you've posted something. It's going to have the warning politics or whatever you decided to put in the text, say, uh, no under 18 or whatever the case is and if the person clicks on it it'll then become visible so it's also quite a nice feature to to, to keep the things clean I think and um, and more sort of child and, and so on friendly and as well and you'll see you've got the normal inserts if you put a link in you know images appear so very much like Twitter but like I said a lot more flexible I think more characters more control over it um, I think there's quite a lot of advantages really that you've that you've got over who you follow and and what you're going to see actually and maybe then the last thing on the desktop side is we can just go and have a look at the settings quickly i'm not going to go through everything in detail but these are some of your general preferences like the color if they had dark obviously very early on way before twitter and everybody else had uh, you can decide how you want to see animations and gifs you can do slow mode so that you don't have lots and lots of feeds coming across very quickly sometimes. You can crop images. You can show or hide the trends. Um, yeah, whether you see media or not automatically. Uh, you can have warnings expanded automatically if you want to. You can control the notifications. I'm trying not to have everything, otherwise it can get very busy. Um, you can block from, so a lot of control, block from non-followers, block from people you don't follow. opt out of search and engine indexing, hide your network, group boosts in timeline. So again, you can already see here more control you've got than if you're on Twitter. Your default posting visibility and languages. Here you can also filter languages. So I, for example, typically said I can read English and Dutch. So yes, show those, but filter the others. I mean, it's no point. I'm not going to be able to read Danish. So uh, it again just sort of helps a bit. Uh, there's also some stats you can get on your followers. You can sort obviously who's following you, unfollow, that sort of thing over there. 
I don't have any filters. If I remember, filters was to cut out information, I think. You can decide where the filter is going to be applicable. Um, you can drop, oh, it's for hiding, yes. So you, you can put certain words and phrases in uh, for a period or for, for permanently uh, to hide certain things. So, if, for example, some people didn't want to see anything about COVID-19. Well, then you could put COVID-19 in here and it's two or three forms, say two months, and that's the end of it. You shouldn't see any more of those um, feeds. Then you've got two-factor authentication as well. You can authorize third-party apps. You can import and export your data. You can invite people. You've got, a, you've got a couple of development activities that you can also switch on and off. So, yeah, that's basically the master and desktop profile in a nutshell, I think. Um, I think I've covered sort of everything I wanted to say there. The other thing I can briefly show you then really is just quickly to show what the what the mobile phone interface looks like. So this is an app called Tusky on, on Android, and it's got a very similar look and feel, similar functionality, but you can just have a look then. This is the home feed, similar to the desktop feed. And you'll see the same options below every post over there. There are your various options if you touch the three, three dot menu. There's the notification stream. And you can again filter on that stream what you want to see or not. That was um, messages. And there is your global timeline or your federated timeline. You see it's very wide. And there's the menu on the mobile app. Preferences, similar sort of settings. And then to, to compose a post, same options really. You can see now the difference with this is you can take a photo directly. There's visibility. And again, you've got 500 characters and you can put a content warning in on the mobile side as well. And you've got your emoticons. The other thing is you can schedule a post. So you can schedule a post only to go out tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock or whenever. So that in a nutshell then is Mastodon Social Network. Um, very interesting and very interactive, I must say. Uh, so I've quite in, I'm been using it now probably for a good two plus years, I think, just after they came out. In fact, longer now. I don't know how long Mastodon has been going for. But they were touted originally as the alternative to Twitter. So most people that are dissatisfied with Twitter, you'll find a lot of them here on, on Mastodon. And as I said, um, a lot of people are using it already. I think out of all the networks, if you were trying to find the most visibility and exposure, then Mastodon probably is the place to start. And remember, you can be followed from elsewhere. So you, 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 you're not tying people in to have to join Mastodon in, in, in order to follow you. So I think that, again, big benefit. And I really wish that there were more social networks actually uh, doing that, doing the same thing. So yeah, Master, and I hope you enjoyed that. Just a quick overview. And I'm going to be back. My next video in the social network side is probably going to be featuring the UMe social network, which is a Google Plus alternative. Well, not an alternative. I suppose you could say it's been trying to clone Google Plus. And I'll be giving a similar rundown on, on its features maybe in about a week or so. And uh, yeah, thanks, and I hope to see you in the next video.